Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is Trisected and I'm doing my keyboard build. It's been some time since I've done a keyboard build and this is one that everyone kind of does at some point. It's the full keyboard build and rebuild. I've also added in how I loop and film switches as well, or at least I decide then if I want to film them or not. So at this point, I'm just rebuilding my keyboard, disassembling everything. These are the Cherry Nixies in stock form so I, I will I will be rebuilding them and looping them up changing the springs as well so just enjoy the whole you know portion of this I actually wanted to give a bit of a commentary as I went along so one of the things that made spurred me on to rebuild my keyboard this way and to also loop and spring swap was actually because I played the friend's keyboard recently and I really enjoyed uh, the loop get yellows, you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> Those are the switches that got us first started, at least got me first started and I was, re I was really enjoying that moment And feeling how smooth those switches were, it really made me feel like Hey, you know, I do want to get back into this whole thing again I also think like I'm not that much alone in the sort of a down in downtime in keyboards as a whole I know I have some friends who have been saying that hey, if the hobby's kind of fading, like we're not really so into it anymore. Maybe it's the whole group bias thing, you know, and like the the different vendors that have been moving in and out of stuff, and it's just left us feeling a bit different, right? I mean, it look like I mean even these springs, the TikTok springs, I I don't even know that if they'll make them ever again, you know, and they're really important springs to me. So I I am thinking about how I, you know, look at the whole keyboard hobby and how I decide things out. So in this case, I, I'm really trying to pick the best which, the best springs I, I enjoy. I forgot which ones I truly prefer on my own. Like, I think I'm tending towards lighter springs right now. Later on, you'll see me change my mind a bit here and there, but you'll see how it goes, yeah. At the end of the day, it's really about preferences, right? I mean, that's how we've all defined this hobby. And I think something like spring weight now all the all the new switches have such great springs, you know. So maybe there isn't such much so much of a need to buy new springs or have a specific spring once more. But hey, I mean, I'm down for it. It's it's fun to still keep some of these guys around. And talking about some of the things I used to do, I I haven't done this for ages. Like putting a putting a whole switch apart, right, and having little boxes for them. You know, I was actually trying to find, off, off camera, I was trying to find like my rails that I used to hold my bottoms of the switches. And I couldn't find them for the life of me. <laughs> like, I, I really don't know where they are. And I, after I've done all my builds recently, I found them again. I mean, that's really crazy, right? But hey, that's what's happening. Slowly disassembling switches, th these are, this is like the most tedious part of like keyboard hobbies they can really really get into. Okay, another hard one is of course diodes and soldering your diodes onto a keyboard. But yeah, this this ranks up pretty high as tedious task to do. But it's fun. I still enjoyed it. I watched a whole bunch of movies and this whole this whole process of it. Yeah, that's the last switch. There you go. Congratulations me. I finished it. At this point, I was kind of being smart and I decided to try and count my springs before I started the spring swap process. Uh, this bag didn't have enough springs. I mean, honestly, I don't remember where I put the other half of the springs. I think there are 100 springs in every bag, but I probably used up these on another switch instead. Uh, yeah, I forgot which one. Anyway, I'll, I'll put them back into the bag soon in this video, this part of the video. And then I'll choose another bag of springs. Man, picking springs is really something I haven't done in so long. Yeah, really, really so long. Okay, I, I went with the Sprit Springs 60G Slow, Extreme Slow, I think it was, that I went for for these guys. I'm using Loop by Gazoo, his, yeah, his Loop, Loop, L-O-O-B. Uh, this is my looping process, doing the side rails first. And I kind of hit the middle and the bottom later. Okay, I'm taking apart these springs. I should have counted these as well. I, I didn't count them because I was kind of in a rush a bit. I shouldn't have rushed it. Anyway, hand lubing the springs at the bottom first. Yeah, putting a good sizable chunk on it. Slotting them down. And then folding up with the top bit. 
it is really quite a bit on the spring yeah and then I get the top slider the stem sides I'm, I'm kind of hitting it pretty generously right okay I'm actually bring it closer to the camera sides moving around all the sides the linears are easy this way I mean that's great <laughs> yeah and then the insides so that really helps the spring sound I can't stand the spring ping like it really gets to me yeah just even everything up I actually do some of a double coat later yeah okay and slotting this one down so I will actually test this guy out um, with film as well so you'll see the film coming on in a short bit I still like my desk keys film I still use it today I had to buy a whole bag because I realized that I don't have them anymore so this is actually a brand new pack I think that I consolidated yeah so in my switch building I will test out one single switch compare it to stock and compare it once more to just a switch looped without anything else so that way um, if the sound sounds okay without film, I won't film the rest of the switches. I'll just test out on one. Yeah. Saves you a lot of time. Because, I mean, if it sounds the same and you don't have to do films, then why not, right? So, yeah. Okay, top housing around the sides like that. Nice, thin layer. And slotting it in. Oh, spinning this round. Such a pain. <laughs> Click, click, click. Yep, so I'm testing out sound. I actually will listen to them both. Yeah, so I'm just pressing around just to hear it for myself a few times. Yeah, anyway, here we go. Uh, time lapse for the rest of the switches. You're gonna see it go through really fast. Yeah. So the thing about looping switches is that you do need to spend like a whole day doing it, or like a whole night at least. I spent a night and extra, like I couldn't finish it all in a day in one sitting. I had to do two sittings for this this batch. Maybe it's because it's 100 switches. And also my phone died, like my battery died at the end of this set, but yeah. Anyway, you should check out the rest of this. I'll take a short break and... See you at the next part of the build. Okay, we are now at the part of assembly. Uh, that's the part where my battery died. If you guys were hoping to see the rest of it, my battery died. And then, yeah, we're here doing the steps. I'm using C3 equals steps. This is the number third rendition, the third one. 
where they have it comes in a box, comes with step pads and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, just lubing the sides very very generously. Again, using loop as in Gazoo's loop L O B. Uh, usually for the wires, I use the dielectric grease, and it works out pretty well. Yeah. So usually I stick it in this way, meaning I loop the main housing first, then I put in the step stem, and then I loop the step stem itself. So sort of getting it a bit more, you know, a bit more efficiently instead of just trying to spam it with with loop. Yeah all around and then I dip it in. I actually do use a brush. I mean, oh, there you go. I've I've used a brush actually. My, I think my phone died again. Oh, it ran off. I don't know. It ran out something and I have I had to stop the clip. Yeah, so anyway, I use a brush to stick in the loop on the insides of the stem too. And then at this point, I'm screwing them on. It comes with all this hardware as well, as in that box of C3 Gold Steps. I, and with the step pads and the whole kit, I think it really works out really well. Like, 30 sing dollars, 20 something to 30 sing dollars for one pack. It's worth it if you know what you're doing. And for this build, I only have two steps because it's a 40%. This is the Prime E board. Uh, Prime E meaning from Prime Elise. It's... A 40% version of an Alice, which is, you know, a split keyboard layout, yeah. Not a full split, but a split enough. Yeah, so I do tighten a second time after just to make sure everything's on tight. Yeah, and then I test that out with a switch running on. So this is a soldered board, so you can see I can just put it in. I got, I got no... Yeah, I tested the whole board and all that, it works completely fine. Used it a whole bunch of times. Yeah, so I'm testing it with a keycap. Let's see how it feels. Feels good. This is the other one. Is it fitting? Yeah. Okay, so it works. And we are going to assemble the rest of the board and stick in the switches. Yeah, usually I stick in the steps there first. As in, I stick in the ones with the steps on. Oh, I'm also being a decent human being and keeping up my loop before I continue. Well, I am so neat in this video. This is not bad. I mean, okay, it might not be neat to some of you, but it's neat to me. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Just time lapse of me sticking in switches. One by one. I like this build a lot. Prime E is one of my favorite boards because it's a sandwich board and it works out pretty fine. It's got one of the best sounds I personally feel. A stack acrylic build. I think a stack acrylic build gives for a really really nice sound and tone. And on switches like these, the cherry nixies, they work out really well. Yeah, you'll hear the sound test soon and I guess you can make your own decision about it then. But in real life when I'm using it, feels and sounds really really great. Also because of the lack of switches that I needed, I needed two different switches for the thumb clusters because I wanted to, the spring, it was the springs thing, right? And then, yeah, I put on the, the cobalt, which are great. Cobalt's are really, really great. Yeah, so this is me doing the soldering thing. I have not soldered for a very long time. Yeah, I was pretty rusty. Forgot how to press in hard and all that kind of stuff. I'm actually using pretty inexpensive soldering iron, like the iron feet. It's it's from AliExpress. It's a decent price. It melts low, so it makes it easy to solder, uh, but also not too low, so it doesn't you know melt the way too easy. Uh, very easy for removal. So when I desolder, it's a lot easier to use. Yeah. So that's kind of how I think about my soldering things. Anyway, time lapse video. Catch you in the next part of the build.
Okay, just in case you're wondering, that little bo ball of orange fuzz is actually foil, I mean aluminium sponge kind of thing, steel sponge maybe, and you use it to wipe your soldering iron uh, when it's all messy and stuff. So I, I clean it every now and then so that your temperature on your soldering iron stays consistent. Yeah, anyway, so here you go, um, assembling the keyboard back, stack acrylic built like I said, sandwich mount for this one. Sandwich mount means the top and bottom squeeze the plate. And in this case, it's a uh, acrylic plate. Yeah, works out really nice. Sounds really great. Love it. And I'm using really nice keycaps. I think this was my first opening or my first use of DMG3. Here we go, and the DMG DMG3 set is on. Man, I really, really took a long time to decide if I wanted to get DMG3. Um, I only got in a third round, right? So that's pretty late. And I think this is my last GMK order. Uh, or pre-order for that matter. I've not done a group buy since two years, you know. It's been literally like two years ago. 2021. And now it's 2023. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Okay, so another thing is compactibility for the 40% of the Prime E. As you can tell, my control key that I put there and the tab you know, it's gonna be different. Here we go, I'm just making whatever work. It, it doesn't match, but it's okay. I'm alright, I got used to it. Yeah. <laughs> it works out pretty fun. Okay, and then, am I gonna be... Yes, I kept up my keycaps on camera. Okay, and here's the sound test. I can tell I've got a little artisan there. It is a Game Boy artisan. <laughs> I hope you like it. Oh, I'm doing the removal of the keycap for you to see. Thanks for sticking around so long. So here yeah, is a little treat. I'm zooming in on the keycap. There you go. After 10 keycap in all its glory. Yeah, very fun. All right, thank you all for catching up with this. See you in my next video. Bye.